friends and welcome back to the Walnut Saga part two. And this is week seven on the vlog, I think. So yeah, I've been doing these for over a month now. Isn't that cool? But uh, we've had several things going on. Uh, Zach had a video about garlic that he planted some garlic, so that went out last Tuesday. And we have a lot of things that we've shot content for. We're just trying to work through them in posting on the website and all that. So there's a lot more coming at you. I'm trying to get that last guess, the method, uh, edited. So hopefully that'll be out soon. Um, but I thought for this week we'd just finish up our story of walnuts. Um, yeah, so it's been it's been a long saga. But I think we're going to come in, I'm going to come into the point where I'm finally getting the stain on the board. And you'll get to see that. So let's, let's just, let's just get right into it. Walnut Saga, here we go. Now is the time that I'm going to finally, finally get to test out that walnut stain that we've labored so hard over. Um, so I've got a wood project here. Got another food board that I'm gonna work on. Um, first of all though, before, oh no, my sandpaper, hold on. I've got some sandpaper. I'm gonna sand this guy down. It's a pre-made board. Um, you'll see we have a post about making food boards and using food safe sealer for it. Um, and so I'll link that to this video too. But I also have some steel wool. Because Caroline had come over and helped me with this. And she said, use steel wool to work on your sanding. And so I got this coarse grade one steel wool. And she said, that's not the right one. It needs to be finer. So then I went back and I got the super fine, super fine steel wood, steel wool. All right, first I'm gonna get this guy sanded down a little bit. I'm gonna have to do both sides. I hate sandpapering, so. Probably what I need to do is get Caroline over here. Because I'm probably doing it all wrong. Let's get this super fine steel wool. It's flicking ant. I think she said use the super fine or really fine steel wool so it doesn't leave little wool particles on your board. I know nothing. Most of you probably know more than I do. So if you've got some tips and tricks for working on wood, you can drop them in the comments. Tell me everything I'm doing wrong. People like to share that online and let you know how you're doing things wrong. So I feel like I, would, I could offer a good outlet for everyone. <laughs> Get that a wipe down. It's time for the moment of truth. We're going to see if our homemade black walnut stain actually stains. We're gonna see if it's any good. Drum roll please. Gonna give it a little stir. I mean, it's looking good so far. See, look at that looking good. 
Hope it stays that way. Alright. Gonna give it a dip. Just start. Ah! Oh. That's actually pretty nice. Hmm. I'm impressed so far. Except for the fact I'm dripping it. I think I'll go over it a couple times. So far, this is starting to look nice. I'm a little surprised. We'll see how it dries. I think we're gonna let this dry. This is what side one looks like. Side two. Stain side, non-stain side. All right. Well, we'll let them give this maybe an overnight or a few hours. Then maybe try to get the other side. But you know, stain was not the only thing that we wanted to use the walnuts for. We actually did want to eat them too. So uh, that was why I brought Brittany in because Brittany's not as much into the, like the, the hard labor part <laughs> of doing the stain and all that. I mean, she's crafty. Don't get me wrong, she can do stuff when she wants to and feels, feels the passion to do so. But um, she's more of my food friend in this. So uh, Brittany and I got together, we were, um, we were eating a lot of cheese and stuff and just talking through the process of how we're going to use these walnuts. And this is just kind of a glimpse into some of our conversation. This is normal conversation for us, but we we filmed it so you could see the process too. So here it is. <laughs> well, mm. the reason why I called you here mm -hmm. tonight, I have walnuts. Yeah. I have walnuts. So these are the ones that Zach and Kara and I extracted and they've been drying out for weeks. And I think I'm gonna put them in a burlap sack and beat them. Or you said you have a nutcracker. Oh, yes, I have. Um, I, it's. I'm pretty sure that it's stylized as like specifically a pecan cracker. Mm. I think I'll have to look, but it, it's in my pantry. Um, so I'll bring it. Well, if it can. I think it can. Crack pecan, I mean, it's wooden, it can crack and it has a crank. Oh yeah, I know yeah. what you're talking about. I've seen those. Yeah. I've been making a stain, a wood stain. Actually, we can see that. Yeah. You just oh, grab sure. bread. I can you just grab oh. bread. Here, I'll grab I'll grab it. I'll grab it. Sorry. <laughs> so here's mm. here's I've done I've stained this about three times mm. and I still have some more process, so I might be done staining. But the walnut stains work pretty good and gotten this pretty dark. That's nice. And so I like it. The wood board that we're doing, that was the first one we did. We have a post on that. And so that's, and this has been sealed. This has not been sealed yet. It's gonna I think we're gonna rub some oil on it first before we seal it. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping to get that nice and shiny. But mm -hmm. we're doing that. And so I've gotten the stain from that. That seems to be going well. So now we actually have to like figure out how we're gonna eat these nuts. So walnuts, I, like you're you're my cooking you're my cooking buddy so yes. we gotta figure out what well, i'm thinking if if when i crack these the nuts are good which they should be they were mm -hmm. before the previous ones mm -hmm. i'm thinking about doing a ravioli with them i got the idea when i was out shopping well this did not give me the idea i just saw it when i was out um there are these tortellinis that mm -hmm. were pre-made that i picked up they're gorgonzola cheese and walnut. That sounds good. 
Okay, so so I'm I'm we're thinking about incorporating walnut into. I'm thinking about a ravioli because mm -hmm. we've got the pasta maker. We can do the sheets. Mm -hmm. Um, but also I've been growing some sage, mm -hmm. and I've been drying it too. Yes. Um, and I have half a pound of ground pork already in the freezer. Yes. And I have some ground beef. Yeah. And I was thinking like a walnut sage. Oh yeah. Ravioli. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, let me get my notes. Uh, 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 on that. Walnut and sage pesto maybe. Hmm. Did we stuff it? Stuff yeah. it with the pesto? We, or, I mean, we mix it, um, mm -hmm. you know, with the ricotta. If you don't want to do a little blue cheese, that's fine. We can do a ricotta. Um, obviously, like, sage and ground pork play mm -hmm. really well mm -hmm. together. That's, that was so, my thinking. Um, and then the walnuts would be really nice mm -hmm. with a sage and ground pork. So, so maybe we do a meatless option and a meated option. Okay, so you're thinking with some ricotta, which yeah. we can make. For sure. That's on the website. Yes. Kind of and it's actually ricotta. very simple. Mm -hmm. It's really easy. And you can control mm -hmm. your salt levels. You can control mm -hmm. your acidity. Even Listen, the dryness level. The dryness it. level. And you can control um, the amount of milk fat you want. What if we did um, ground pork? We back off on the sage inside of the pork filling. Maybe we incorporate a little Romano walnut with the pork. And then we and do ground a, beef. And ground beef, mm -hmm. sure. And then we do a sage butter sauce, a brown butter sage sauce to go over the pork. Okay, one. I thought about that, mm -hmm. a butter sage sauce. But then I'm also thinking of creamy butternut squash <gasps> with maybe the sage with a sage in that. sauce mm -hmm. for sure. Butternut mm -hmm. squash and ricotta. Mm hmm Yeah. I make a lasagna mm. with that mm. that mm. I mm. may put up on the website yeah. at some point. It has. Yeah, we use butternut, or you, I think you can use an acorn squash too. I made a baked, um, a stuffed baked acorn last night. Mm. It was very good. But yeah, a creamy one. So mm -hmm. we put a little bit of like um, heavy cream or some half and half with it. Yeah. I also kind of like the idea of um, perhaps a meat sauce um, mm -hmm. with the cheese one. Mm -hmm. Just to kind of like, do you remember being a little kid? And eating the Chef Boyardee ravioli. Yes. Oh, I and there was something about that, my that a sugary red meat sauce mm -hmm. on the raviolis. And if you go to like mm -hmm. a nice Italian place, like you're never going to get a red sauce on a ravioli. Mm -mm. Ever. <laughs> but maybe, I don't know. I mean, I'll put a red sauce on I'll put on a red it. sauce on a ravioli. I'm uh -huh. not Italian. Me either. So it doesn't offend me. Sorry to our Italian viewers. I'm the, um, <laughs> I'm the Lidl who sells the... <laughs> Nice. Stuff. But like, I'm thinking about perhaps, you know, you talked about heavy cream, so I'm thinking about yeah. maybe like a lovely vodka sauce, mm -hmm. like a cream vo a vodka mm -hmm. cream sauce mm -hmm. on, um, on that meat filled one or on the, ooh, mm -hmm. making like a meat sauce, meat vodka sauce on the cheese filled one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then butternut, butternut the sage, sage on mm -hmm. the, in the meat one. Yes. And walnuts, and walnuts throughout. Absolutely, yes. I think we have a plan. Yeah. Okay. I would have to test the sage pesto a lot because I feel like the more I think about it, the more it would be overwhelming. I don't think we're gonna have enough to do a sage pesto. Well, anyway. and I don't think that would is a good idea anyway. So <laughs> I would like to retract. But we have varying levels of cooking skill. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, we have varying levels of um, planting and propagation skill. And I can tell you, I'm at the bottom. I don't care. I literally don't care about planting. <laughs> I literally don't care about moving things from pot A to pot B. Nor do I care about going into the woods if I'm not going in there to like look for snakes or watch wildlife. If you're gathering food, though, I mean that's I mean, fun look. and all. It's fun and all, yeah, but like, food from yeah, the but like, I'm not gonna. I don't. So that's not my my journey is not that. <laughs> but my journey is whenever you know you bring me, and maybe that's the thing we'll do. Y'all mm -hmm. forage and bring me back the stuff, and I'll see what that's I can. What, that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. So we forage. We've 
I think like we're sucking all the all everything we can out of these walnuts. Yeah. Um. And then even the pawpaws, like it's pawpaw mm -hmm. season, so like well, less they're juicy. kind of going away now. Well, we're at the end of it. It's a short season, but like what I've learned from well, my I'm ice cream with it next mm -hmm. time. Oh, our sorbetto. Mm -hmm. But you know what I really kind of love is the idea of a dessert ravioli. Mm -hmm. So what about some kind of like delightful vanilla mousse? with um with walnuts mm -hmm. or like a maple mousse even like a mm -hmm. maple vanilla mousse with walnuts um and then some kind of beautiful light sauce to go on top mm -hmm. you would need something like yes mm -hmm. i love the idea of that okay like a maple mousse okay with walnuts it's very autumnal okay so the thing is, the, the, the stuffing, it's got to be something that can be boiled. Yeah. So will the mousse withstand? Because if we're using Depends. pasta, now are we using actual pasta or are we going to use something else? Let me figure it out. It's okay. a little embryo. Think it through. Mm -hmm. I've had my idea for dessert burritos, mm -hmm. but... Mm -hmm. Well, so, April's been thinking about this mm -hmm. and... Just let me in on this idea tonight. Yeah. And so. Well, I knew she'd go along with my idea. I'm shooting off the cuff, but I'm really <laughs> excited about it. I love flavors and I love recipes and I love coming up with new things and creating things is really delightful. And so I'm thinking so, that you and I will think on on the raviolis mm -hmm. and we'll come up with a plan mm -hmm. and we'll do the stuffing. Then we'll get the friends over to. Um, we can even do. We'll make them our little pasta, uh, mm, yes. our pasta workers, because we're going to hand make the pasta too. We could even do some kind of enriched sweet pasta. Okay. The dough itself mm -hmm. could be enriched with something. I don't want it to be too sweet because obviously the maple. I'm really, really, really loving the idea of maple walnut. Or what if we fried it? Love it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Why because not? You don't have to boil the. You can no. fry the pasta. Like, Olive Garden fries fried, their raviolis. Fried raviolis. Why should we? Especially our dessert ones that we could do like a puff pastry yes. ravioli, or even a cannoli. Mm -hmm. We can get cannoli shells and yeah. we could smush them. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, I love this idea. Well, Let's do it. All right, you keep making your notes. Yeah, like we'll, maybe it wouldn't be like a mousse as much as it would be more like a pastry cream. Yeah. I think something like a, a cream cheese something base. Something substantial. Something more. Yes. Mm -hmm. The walnut project is closer to being done than it ever has before. So I've got my board here. I don't know if you can see it fully. I've stained this. I've done three coats of walnut stain. So it's gotten pretty dark and it's pretty nice. Um, I'm actually happy with how it turned out so far. Um, it, of course, is water-based, and so it's not as shiny as I would like it to be. Um, but I think I'm finished with the stain part. But today I'm going to put some coconut oil on it and rub that in before I do the finish. Hopefully I won't ruin it. But coconut oil is what I use for my cutting boards. It's food safe. It keeps them. It keeps them nice and healthy. So I'm just gonna rub all that in and see if it gives it a good shine after it dries. Because I really love, I really love how the walnut stain looked after, like when it was still wet. And so, if I can achieve that look with it, by rubbing this oil in, and then put the finish on, that's going to be real nice. I think. Who knows, I haven't like YouTubed anything to try to figure out if I'm doing anything right. I'm just going for it, and we're going to see what happens. It's pretty much our motto, let's just see what happens.
take the cloth and just scrape off any excess oil that's on here. Get it rubbed in real good. In this right now and so I'm gonna let that oil just uh, do its thing sink in a little better give it like a day or two and then we'll see if it needs more oil and then we'll seal it and so I'm really excited about this I mean this is starting to look good yeah getting so close to being finished with this thing so today gotten it well I've let the oil sink in and so it's looking really pretty so now it's time to sand it down another time and put the finish on so I'm really excited about this because we're getting so close to being done so I'm gonna sand sand it a bit so the finish will stick on it and get in there real good First coat of the finish. I'll probably have to do this twice. Alright, just dip it in and work that finish. dry and then dry a bit and then we'll get the other side a little bit later and then do one more coat and I think we'll be done. I'm thinking I'm hoping that this is my last last bit of finish that I'm going to do so hopefully hopefully we'll be through after this and then I can wash this board and it'll be ready to use but we'll see. I'm gonna give it a good sanding one more time before putting this last coat of finish on. Hopefully the last go. Then we're gonna have a nice little food board. So after all that we've been through with the walnuts, here was the final product with my stained display board. We've used it for cheese. We've used it for some meats. I've used it as a cutting board. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. So, Operation Walnut Wood Stain was successful. And so I'm pleased with this piece. And we have a lot of stain left over. Um, Caroline may use some for a project that she has coming up. At least she mentioned that. So, if she wants to do that, it's there. After I let the walnuts dry though, then it was time to crack them open. And you've seen before that we went through... A lot of processes trying to get them cracked open and because we actually needed to get the walnuts out the eat the edible part so um, after trying a few things I decided to put them in a sack and just beat them and so here's a little bit of footage of that I didn't include too much because it would eventually get boring and frustrated for you, but you can see what I did right here.
then after all that work, what I got were these edible walnuts. I've been keeping in them in the refrigerator until Brittany and I can get everyone together and make our raviolis. I did forage some more walnuts. A bunch fell um, along the path where I typically walk. So I have some more that I need to run over with the car and see if we can get a few more nuts out of it to maybe make some of the recipes. But this is actually a good bit though. I think for our ravioli this will work. But yeah, so it was a lot of work to get this and this. But it was a great learning experience. We're not completely done with them because we do have to make our dish but this is pretty much the end of the walnut saga. Thank you for coming along with us and sharing in this journey of learning. <laughs> but anyway, there's other stuff coming up. We'll hopefully be moving on from walnuts very soon. I have some other recipes and some cooking videos and uh, some Instagram reels, stuff like that. We shot a bunch of things. Just have to get that together and out to you, but we're really looking forward to it. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you the next time.